Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke chapter 24 and I'll be reading verses 36 through 49 and this is what it says. Now while they were telling these things, Jesus himself stood in their midst and said to them, peace be to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought that they were looking at a spirit and he said to them, why are you frightened and why are doubts arising in your hearts? See my hands and my feet that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a spirit does not have flesh and bones, as you plainly see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they still could not believe it, because of their joy and astonishment, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They served him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in front of them. Now he said to them, These are my words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all the things that are written about me in the law of Moses and in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, so it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for forgiveness of sins would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Pray with me. Lord, this morning, the, the reading it begins with peace and it ends with power. Lord, may your peace and your power be something that aren't just words printed on a page, but you living in our lives. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Larry Walters was a 33-year-old truck driver who lived in Southern California. He was sitting in his yard one day when he came up with an idea. After drinking a few cold beverages, he came up with the idea sitting in his lawn chair that what would happen if, if he took some weather balloons and he attached them to his, his lawn chair? Maybe he could fill them with helium and, and rise up and see what his neighbors were doing there. So he went out and he bought 45 weather balloons and a canister of helium. He anchored his lawn chair to the ground and, and he began filling up the canisters of helium. A neighbor was going to cut him loose when he said, just a minute, I need one more thing. He ran in and he grabbed his BB gun. He said, if I, I start rising too fast, I can start shooting out some of the, the weather balloons and, and come back gently to earth. Well, his neighbor cut him loose, and rather than rising gently, he rocketed to 11,000 square feet in the air until he drifted into the, the landing patterns of planes landing at L.A. International Airport. A Continental pilot called the tower and said, Tower, we have a fellow up here in a lawn chair with weather balloons attached to it. Well, my hunch is they thought that Continental pilot had had a few too many cold beverages as well. 
But they did send a helicopter and they fished Larry Walters out of the sky. And when he got back down to earth, <laughs> a reporter asked him, said, were you afraid? He said, no, not really. He said, would you do it again? He said, no, not really. And then they asked him the really important thing. They said, well, why did you do it? He said, well, you know, you can't just sit there. <laughs> well, you know, you can't just sit there, but, you know, sometimes you really should. Um, <laughs> what, they, what Jesus says at the end of our reading is, stay, stay. So often it is, we, we have a tendency to think that our, our, our power comes from rush, 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 and go, 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 and hurry, 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 and, and that's how we get things done in this life. But you really can just sit there. You really can stay. And that word stay here literally means we really can't be still. That the disciples knew where Jesus' strength came from. And in Luke chapter 4, the disciples tell us that often Jesus would slip away to deserted places to pray. That Jesus would stay before he hurried. He would stay before he would go. He would stay. Stay. And know where his, his power came from. It was in that time spent with, with God. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. You know, sometimes we can stay there, but we need to stay before we go. Stay before you go. And the first thing that, that our reading tells us this morning is, is to, to stay in peace. Verse 36 says, And now, while they were telling these things, Jesus himself stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Larry Nelson is one of the greatest golfers of all time and he's grew up right in, in Cobb County not too far from here he had won some major tur golf tournaments and then he had a two-year slump it was in 1983 that it looked like he was having a, a fantastic comeback he was playing in the U.S. Open and he was tied for first place his approach shot on the 16th hole came and it landed on the green, but it was still 62 feet away from the hole. Well, any golfer will tell you a 62-foot putt may as well be 400 yards away. It's, it just doesn't happen that people make 62-foot putts very often at all. Well, the camera went on Larry Nelson. He lifted his head. He sized up the putt, and then he putted it downhill, up a slope, across another, up another slope, and around, and it went into the hole. He went on to, to win the tournament, but many golf analysts called that the, the putt of the year, the best putt of the year, not just for Larry Nelson, but for, for anyone. Well, after that tournament, the they were interviewing Larry Nelson and the reporter asked him, said, did you pray during the match? Larry said, yes. And he said, were you praying during that 62 foot putt that you would make it? Larry said, no. Well, the reporter was a little bit surprised. He said, what did you pray? He said, I prayed for peace. Is there anyone who's not seeking peace today? Peace in our families. Peace in our hearts. And it may be that peace in our schools, as you go back to school, peace in our workplace, as we, we go back to, to work. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. The Apostle Paul is sitting in prison. And this is what he says. He says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all our understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. 
Jesus is the one that, that stands guard of our, of our heart and our mind. Jesus is the sentinel. Jesus is the one that we spend time with, that we get to know the guardian of our heart, the guardian of our mind. And we trust him because we've spent time staying, staying in touch with him. Stay, stay in peace, stay in peace before you go. And the second thing that I want to talk about this morning is stay attentive to Scripture. Verse 45, this is what it says. Then Jesus opened their minds to understand the Scriptures. Not just read them, but to to understand the Scriptures. The the Scripture, it's not just, the Bible's not just a, a... a collection of old words and old stories from a long time ago that the Spirit of God speaks through the Bible today. It was about 112 years ago, I was uh, in college, and during the summers, very often I would work in a warehouse. Now, this particular warehouse was working in there during the summer, it was a lot like walking on the face of the sun. It was the hottest place in the universe. There was only one place hotter, and that was in the back of the truck. And we'd spend the whole of the day loading these trucks, and usually the truck would go out for a delivery the next morning. And on occasion, there'd be, they would be short of a driver. And this company that I worked for, we'd make deliveries all over the state of Georgia. Well, the first time that I was a driver making delivery of a truck someone else had loaded, I... I was making a delivery all the way down to South Georgia. I drove all day to get down there, opened up the back of the truck, and it came time to make that first delivery. And whoever loaded the truck did not put that first delivery on the back of the truck. It was all the way in the belly of the truck. I had to nearly unload the whole truck in order to get to that first delivery. And once I made the delivery, I had to load everything that I had unloaded And then the second delivery, I didn't know where anything was because I had loaded and unloaded the truck without knowing the proper order to, to unload the truck from. It took me one day longer than forever to make that first truck delivery. And I discovered something very, very, very important. That most of the wear and tear in this life has to do with poor loading Most of the wear and tear in this life has to do with poor loading, the way we load our minds, the way we load our hearts, the stories that we load into our minds and into our hearts, the videos we load into our minds and into our hearts, the words that we load into our minds and our hearts. That if we load fear and worry, guess what comes out first? If we load in contempt and anger, well, what do you think comes out first? Jesus is telling his disciples. He's pointing to Scripture. Not just what do you think or how do you feel or what's already in there or you're as good as you can get and you're just getting better. He points to Scripture. And when we load our our hearts and our minds with Scripture, that's what comes out. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, all Scripture is inspired by God. And that word inspired means breathed by God. All Scripture is inspired by God and it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and training in righteousness. And verse 17 says, so that. So that the man or woman of God may be adequate and equipped for every good work. Very often, most often, the stories that we practice and we rehearse and we reload in our hearts and our minds, it doesn't equip us for, for much of anything other than fear and worry, anger and contempt. This morning, I want to invite you to begin to, to open Scripture, and not just any old place. Go to the Gospel of John. 
and read only the number of verses that you will read every day, even if it's one verse a day or four verses a day. And if you need a Bible app, YouVersion is a wonderful Bible app to go to. And you can, can carry it with you on your phone every day. And it, even if you read just four verses every day and you load your mind, your heart, with the Gospel of John, what you'll discover is the nature of a good and a loving God who gave his life for you. And then what you'll discover is that the Word of Christ will, will dwell in you richly with all wisdom. And it'll begin to, to change, to change what you say and what you think. That the living Christ lives through Scripture and it's in Scripture that He transforms our, our hearts and our minds. And so when He rose from the grave, He opened their minds to understand Scripture and He does it today as well. Stay. Stay before you go. Stay attentive to Scripture. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is stay focused on what Christ has done. Stay focused on what Christ has done. Verse 46 and 47 says, And Jesus said to them, So it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for forgiveness of sin would be proclaimed in his name to all the nations, beginning in Jerusalem. Kilton Stewart was an anthropologist. He studied tribes all over the all over the world. And he wrote a little article about a tribe named the Sanoi tribe in Malaysia that this tribe was different than any other tribe he had ever seen. That this tribe, at, at first when he began to study them, that the Sanoi tribe seemed like other tribes. They lived in bamboo huts with thatched roof and that they, they had simple farming methods in order to, to survive along with hunting and fishing. But there was one thing that was very, very different about this tribe. He goes on to say that this tribe took guilt seriously. And that from the time the children were very young, they were taught that if they hurt someone inadvertently, that they didn't just let the guilt sit with them. That if they hurt someone, that they tried to figure out a way to make it right, to make amends with the person. Not just during the day, but they even taught their children that at night in their dreams to find a way to make it right with other people. And he goes on to say this. He says, the result was that the Sonoy experienced no mental illness, no suicide, no truancy. In fact, nothing even approaching what we'd call depressed behavior. He went ahead and found that these were the most serene and democratic group he had ever encountered with a social system equal to modern man's achievements in communications and physics, all because they'd learned to deal with the problem of guilt. So often it is. We try and deal with guilt by saying, well, we're basically good. And that was, just an, that was just an exception, what we did. And we try and so often just push it away. But Jesus, Jesus pointed to what he did on the cross, that it was enough for our guilt and our shame, that he nailed our guilt, our sin, and our shame to the cross to take away its power once and for all. And that what he says is, is that repentance for forgiveness of sin would be proclaimed in Jesus' name. That what he did on the cross, that it was enough. So often we focus not on what Jesus did, so often we focus on what we do. So often we, we 
we think that, well, the heart of Christianity is all about loving everybody as best we can. While that's important, that's not the heart of the Christian faith. C.S. Lewis said that the Christian faith has one great fact, and that great fact is the resurrection, and one great doctrine, and that doctrine is redemption. Redemption, that what Christ did on the cross, that it was enough for you and me, that we might be transformed, and not just love the best we can, but he rose from the grave to live his life through us, that we might love the best that, that he can through us. That yes, we take guilt seriously. Jesus died on the cross for your guilt and sin and shame, for my guilt and sin and shame, and for our neighbor's guilt and sin and shame. Colossians 3, 13 says, bear with one another, forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you. We approach one another, not with a sense of higher or lower, but with a sense of humility, knowing that the very grace that you and I have received is available to them as well. We can't get that by rushing through life. We can't understand that or, or have that as a part of our hearts, our minds in the middle of busy, 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 rush, 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 and go, go, go. Did we stay? We stay before we go. We stay focused not on what we do, but what on what Christ has, has done for us. And we approach others in humility and grace. This morning it may be that you've not received that forgiveness because you've been he hesitant to admit that you need it. That's not taking guilt seriously. It's trying to, to deal with it ourselves Scripture points to what Christ has done for, for you and for me, not just what we can do on our own, because we fall woefully short. This morning it may be that you've never asked Jesus to forgive you. Take guilt seriously enough to ask him. Stay. Stay in prayer. And ask him to forgive you. Or it may be that you've not stayed focused on Scripture. Maybe you've tried to focus on good things, wonderful things, but it's not Scripture. And this day, that you want to start reading Scripture a little bit every day so that your heart and your mind might be loaded with something different, the power of His Holy Spirit living in you, through words found in Scripture. Or it may be that this morning you've not known His peace because you haven't stayed and asked for that peace. He gives it, and He gives it freely, and I want to pray with you this morning. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, you start with peace and you end with power. So often we want to start with power and go and hurry and rush. And we miss you because we don't ever stay to, to listen for your voice. We don't stay to receive your peace. We don't stay to receive your power. The power of forgiveness that's available to us today. This morning... It's a great day for confession. To turn over to you those places where we've blown it, 
where we've fallen far short and we take guilt seriously that you might make us right with you and, and then we might stand, stand straight up in, in the power and strength that you offer and continue on this day. Continue on attentive to your voice through Scripture. Attentive to your peace. Lord, there's so much busyness going on these days that we long for peace, but so often we're too busy to receive it. So busy that we don't ask for it. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, breathe peace on us this day. And tomorrow morning, help us to to stay, to be still, and ask for your peace again. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.